Hello, I'm Christina. On behalf of the Aurora Cultural Center, we would like to welcome you to Ask an Artist. Today I'm joined by contemporary artist Ronnie Clark. Ronnie is a Toronto-based mixed media artist who blends choreography, movement, video, and installation. She is also a former Aurora High School graduate and had previously participated in 2013's Youth Arts Exhibition here at the Centre. Ronnie's practice explores how language becomes translated and mediated in the digital age. Using choreographed movement, her works investigates technology's role in our interactions with others. Clark has exhibited at numerous venues during her ever-growing career, such as Forest City Gallery in London, Trinity Square Video, X-Space Cultural Centre, and the Art Gallery of Ontario, all in Toronto. She has recently participated in a number of online gallery exhibitions this past year. Today, I'll be asking Ronnie questions that were sent in by this year's exhibiting McCoy student artists. Please enjoy. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, one of the questions, which um, would be what university did you attend? Yeah, um, so I went to Western University in London. Um, so I was there for four years um, and I got to study in the studio stream. Um, so it was a four year program, uh, very, very small course in it, uh, community in London. Um, so uh, I really liked going there. Um, when I first applied to a lot of schools, uh, I was interested in a lot of different programs, but it really took um, visiting the art building, um, seeing like what the experience would be like. Um, it really convinced me to go there. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that um, I got to go to art school. Um, so hopefully a lot of the great falls get to do that as well. That's fantastic. One of the questions that we had uh, submitted was what does university look like in terms of uh, coursework and then non-art classes and kind of, I guess, balancing the two? Yeah, um, so your courses are going to look like they can be very, very different depending on the institution you're going to. Some universities have more of like a studio stream, some have a more heavy focus in um, art history. Um, so at Western anyway, there was a, kind of, you got to choose either one in terms of like non-art courses, you're also going to be doing um, at least depending on the institution, you might have to do uh, stuff in like business or science, uh, humanities, you kind of get to branch out a little bit in your first year. Um, so that's pretty consistent, but the higher uh, up you go in your education, the more you get to sort of uh, specify um, the things that interest you and then graduate with um, the degree you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, and, and coming out with that kind of uh, breadth of knowledge of, you know, a little bit of everything. Yeah, definitely. Super. I guess, in your personal experience, um, what job opportunities sort of present themselves um, after graduation? Yeah, um, there, there's a lot of things you can do during um, school because um, you're usually off uh, for so many summers. You have a lot of time to think of uh, what you want to do the next year, but I use that free time to um, start looking for opportunities while you're still in school. So there's a lot of internships, um, doing a lot of extracurriculars with your kind of art community. Um, will make you help you make a lot of connections that helps uh, bridge the gap after your graduation. I think that's a really great idea. Yeah, that's a, um, you know, and then there's the uh, Young Canada Works program. That's a federal program that helps people during that summertime uh, to find uh, work that's specific to uh, working in the arts. And it's just for students and yeah. How do you develop your artistic career um, and how do you seek out uh, opportunities to do this? Um, so I would say opportunities are kind of everywhere. It really depends uh, where you look, uh, who you're talking to. Um, they'll be out there. So really, I really love to call, um, call for submissions websites or like to join um, art groups like on Facebook, Instagram, um, just to see what people are talking about. Um, so once you're really putting yourself out there, uh, those opportunities will be made available to you. Um, so you've really just got to kind of keep an eye out, see um, if there's a gallery you really like, um, maybe try meeting some of the staff, um, seeing if they're having any call for submissions, um, and then really um, apply as soon as possible. Uh, absolutely, I would agree with that. Um, I, I think I would just add, um, you know, mm -hmm. I know that a cultural center does this, but um, a lot of if there's galleries that you like, usually they'll have an e-newsletter and you can mm -hmm. sign up for that.
one of the questions that I thought was, um, I don't have an answer for this question. I think it's a great question, um, but any tips on uh, cultivating a collector base? Um, I think a good thing is to be very authentic with your work. Um, so being honest, you are um, putting out work um, that you're excited by. Uh, people will start to pick up on those things that you're putting out in the world. Um, so kind of, you can, it's really, really fun to sort of experiment uh, with different kinds of media. If you have sort of um, something that relates back to you, a lot of people can make a connection with uh, your kinds of works. Um, so they might see, hey, these works uh, kind of look similar. They'll look it up and it's actually by you, they'll figure it out. Um, so that can be really helpful uh, for establishing a cluster base, um, even though I don't have one, uh, but that's the luck. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I, I know um, uh, the Toronto um, Art Art Arts Festival, um, they really kind of encourage uh, applicants to, one, presenting, to, to have a uh, more cohesive uh, body of work um, mm -hmm. when you show up, have works that all follow a similar theme or, or in some way are, are connected so that people can identify that as um, as a clerk, as a as a work, yeah. <laughs> Last question we're going to talk about today is: um, Do you have any tips about writing about your art practice, um, describing uh, or explaining your artwork? Yeah, um, so I would say I think every artist in every stage of their career um, can always work on this, myself included. Um, so, um, so I find. Uh, being extremely clear in what you're trying to say is a huge, huge thing. So writing in a way um, that's accessible, uh, using words um, that make sense to kind of a more uh, broader audience. If someone who's never seen an art show before, someone that's never seen a painting before, make sure that they can understand um, what you're trying to accomplish. Make sure you understand the things uh, you're trying to accomplish. Uh, so you might write a draft of an artist statement. It makes sense to you. Makes so much sense in my head, um, but then my friend doesn't have any idea what I'm saying. Um, so having someone edit it, to edit it three times and then have another person edit it a fourth time. Uh, so just being clear, being honest, um, think about the things you're trying to uh, accomplish with your work. Um, and yeah. yeah, and I think you're completely right. It is something that you continue to develop and you uh, continue to get better at. Yeah. Um, and you need to get out of your own head sometimes and, and see what other people think. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. that, that could be writing in general, but definitely mm -hmm. um, when you're dealing with more conceptual uh, things. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, oh if, um, if any of you out there have, have yet to see um, the performance piece, that'll be up until the end of the exhibition and a link will be in the description.